welcome, welcome, welcome to Obscure Depths. We're talking about fantasy pitchers today. I'm going to do a little starting pitcher, then I'm going to get to some relief pitchers as well. I have a top 30 starting pitchers. Obviously, you know, they're going to end up in any kind of order at the end of the season, but this is, this is my top 30, and again, these are picks made with my gut and my baseball know-how. If you don't like them, please comment on the bottom of this screen, right down there, and tell me I'm wrong, tell me I'm stupid, insult me. Um, you'll be really surprised at what Braves fans tell me. Um, but anyway, yeah, if you think I'm wrong, comment, please. Anyway, let's get right to it. My number one starting pitcher. Who is it? Justin Verlander. Of course it's Justin Verlander. This team is probably going to be in the World Series again. Justin's going to win 20 games. He's going to strike out 220 batters. Uh, number two, Clayton Kershaw. I got him slated for about 17 wins. I think this, I mean, it, we're, these, this is a possibility of a World Series team as well. Um... I don't know if this team is going to gel once the playoffs start this year. I think they'll make the playoffs. They'll probably win their division, but I don't know if they're going to make it through the playoffs. I think they might need a couple of more years together, but I really like Kershaw. He's a very dominant lefty, and he's just got good stuff. I'm going to stay with the lefties here, number three, and that's David Price. Of course, he's going to strike out 200 batters, probably 15-plus wins, and it's a nice low ERA. Um, really like what he brings to the table. I think he's better years are probably still ahead of him, which is scary for us all. Uh, number four, I have Jared Weaver. Conservatively have him about, again, 15, 16 wins. ERA right around three, striking out 200 batters. This is another very good team that I think is going to win their division, and Weave's going to be a big part of that. Um, some people think that I look like Jared Weaver. What do you think? Do I need a baseball hat on? Maybe the hat helps. I don't have one right here, otherwise I'd put it on. But anyway, number five, Cole Hamels. Another guy, 200 strikeout potential, 15 wins, ERA right around three. And I think that might be, you know, he might be the, the bright spot on that team. I think these, the top three pitchers on this team are very good. I think this team is going to struggle, and you're going to see not great numbers from their three studs, even though they're all in my top 30. Uh, number six, Matt Cain. Matt Cain just seems to keep getting stronger. I think his strikeouts are going to drop a little bit. I see him about 170. But I see him getting 14 wins, ERA right around three or maybe a little bit higher. Um, number seven, I got King Felix. This is a guy that's very surprising to me is going later in drafts. I feel like he should. I'm I'm a big AL or NL only guy, so he's a, he's always top his, Top pick, one of the top pitchers picked him AL after, you know, probably after Verlander and Price. But those mixed leagues, uh, King Felix really dropped, and I think I got him in the ninth round of a mixed league the other day. I mean, he, you know, he's not going to get 15, 20 wins, but he's going to strike out close to 200 batters. So if you see, if you see him out there, or you need a pitcher in the sixth or seventh, go look around. And I'm sure you can find this guy. I mean. He's still young. He's got a little bit of an injury issue, which kind of scares me a little bit. Maybe that's why he's dropping in drafts. But all signs are very positive right now. And until you hear something definite, I would I would just go for it. I mean, he's a definitely a nice. It'll be definitely a nice reward, especially getting him like an eighth or ninth round. Number eight, I got Adam Wainwright. Um, Wainwright bounced back very nicely from Tommy John surgery and had a great year. I see him doing much of the same thing this year, about 14 wins, 14, 15 wins, ERA around three. Strikeouts might be a little bit down because he is getting up there in age, but I definitely see him having a decent year. Uh, number nine, I got CC Sabathia, probably 10 to 13 wins, probably more, 13 wins. ERA in the threes, strikeouts close to 200. Uh, Cliff Lee, I have number 10. You know, I think, like I said earlier, I think this Philly team is going to struggle. I think Cliff could still get 12 wins. Strikeouts are going to be down a little bit. I think they're going to be in the 180 range. Uh, R.A. Dickey, number 11. I think R.A. Dickey's going to see a little bit of a rise in ERA. I think teams are going to slowly try to figure him out if that is at all, all possible. But I think he can get 13 wins and still strike out close to 200 batters. Uh, Gio, I got him put, pointed, put it down for 15 wins. Gio Gonzalez. I think his ERA is going to take a little bit of a hike this year, but I think he's still going to get some wins, and he's still going to 
be keep these guys in some really good ball games. The Nationals really like what he does, and it, uh, a dominant lefty, which is you know lefties, lefties starters that are dominant are very are very nice, and the Nationals are certainly going to give him a long leash. Uh, number thirteen, I have Madison Bumgarner. This guy is still young and just getting stronger. Um, I see this Giants team taking a step back a little bit this year, not not winning the division, maybe getting second or third. So I think he might struggle to find some wins. But I think he'll get a nice strikeout total out of the deal, you know, in the 180 mark. Um, Zach Grinke is another stud that's kind of dinged up, which is very, very concerning. I'm sure the Angels, the Angels especially. So I conservatively have him with about 13 wins, ERA around four, 170 Ks. Chris Sale, um, this is a he's on a Chicago White Sox team that is gonna I think struggle to score runs this year. I have them slated for about fourth in the division, but I think he'll he'll manage 10 10 to 12 wins. His ERA might be up there, and his strikeouts are gonna be decent, 170 to 200. I know that's a broad range, but I I just don't you just don't know. You know what they're gonna do if this team is way out of it, and they have an opportunity to stick Chris Sale for a start or two. I think they will do that. So I, I don't like him coming come September. If you have him, and he's really really hot around the All Star break, I would suggest trading high for him. Maybe getting some keepers for next year, or maybe getting some draft picks if your league does that type of thing. Number 17, I have James Shields. This is a team again that is not slated to win, you know, playoff wise, but I really like the Royals. I think one important thing to remember is the Royals have the only difference is this team has is in their rotation. Everybody else in their batting order is there from the year before. So he's going to have some sticks and some confidence behind him. So I got him conservatively getting about 13 wins. I think his ERA might struggle with some young fielders out there, and his Ks are going to be down a little bit. But I, I really like him and what he can do for this team. Number 18, I have Giovanni Gallardo. Um, I don't know. The, I really like the Brewers' offense. Their pitching is decent, but I, their fielding is their fielding and pitching is is gonna gonna struggle this year. Um, Gallardo is obviously the top pitcher there. I got him slated for like 10 to 11 wins, ERA just under four, 160 Ks. That is a conservative thing. I mean, I think he could get some more Ks. I'm just just not crazy about him right now. Uh, numbers 19, I have Josh Johnson. Uh, I got him slated for about 12 wins with the Blue Jays. ERA right around four, 150 Ks. Again, he's a guy that hasn't been the most durable of players over the past couple of years, so. I see him maybe on the DL once or twice. Hopefully, hopefully not at all. But you know that's going to certainly hold him back, and he's going to be um, on a limit. I think he's going to be on somewhat of a limited uh, innings basis. They're not going to send him out into eight, eight, eighth and ninth innings of games if they don't have to. Number twenty, I got Max Scherzer. Uh, this kid is electric. A really nice, really nice movement on some of his pitches. Does have a little bit of an issue sometimes, but. I see him getting about 15, 15 to 13 wins or 13 to 15 wins with this Tigers team. I think his ERA is going to be up there. That's why I have him so down at number 20. But he's going to get about 100, 190 Ks. I think he could ERAs could be in the mid fours, but he's going to strike out a lot of batters. He's kind of a feast or famine type of guy. But uh, I still I still like him, and obviously he's going to get some wins being on the Tigers. Number 21, I got Johnny Cueto. I got him slated for about 12 to 14 wins, ERA around 4, 160 plus Ks. Number 22, I got Yu Darvish. I think his ERA is going to take a little bit of a hit this year and go up above 4, but I think he could still win 15 games and have some nice, nice strikeout games. He's a little bit of a streaky guy, and he has some issues sometimes, so that does overtly affect his ERA. Number 23, I have Roy Holiday. Um, you know, he's a little dinged up, and Philly might be best served to start him on the DL to, to begin the year. I don't know if they will, but they want a healthy Royal Holiday. Obviously, we saw what they did last year without him for a good majority of the season, and I think they want they want to be have him healthy, so I think they should really be conservative and take him along slowly. I have him conservatively slated for 11 wins. ERA mid threes about 150 Ks. I don't see him making all 33 starts this year, so I just I'm conservatively picking him at those at his stats. Uh, Jordan Zimmerman, uh, I got him slated at number 24. I see him win about 13 games. I think his ERA is going to get up there and his strikeouts are going to fall a little bit. I think he's still a young pitcher and this might be a little bit of a down year for him. But I I 
I think he's going to those those are going to some pre, be pretty decent numbers for him going forward, you know, about 10 to 13 wins, ERA around 4, 150 plus strikeouts. I think that's what you're going to expect from this guy going forward. Um, if he jumps off the page, he might do that too. I really like him as a sleeper in drafts and he's a guy that's going very late in drafts too. So don't discount Jordan Zimmerman. He's on a good team, has a lot of win potential. And his numbers, like I said, I, my predictions are pretty conservative. Number 25, I have Matt Latos. I think that Cincy ballpark is going to catch up to him this a little bit this year. So his ERA is going to be right around 450 Ks. Let's see him win in 12, 13 games. Number 26, I got Hiroyuki Kuroda. Kuroda, I see him winning 12 to 14 games. His ERA is going to be around 4. 140 Ks. He's not a great, great K per inning guy, but he just does. He does what he can to get hitters out, and he just really works really hard. Number tw on T7, I have Dan here, and I see him winning about 10 to 12 games. I think his ERA is going to be in the fours, but I do see him striking out a lot of batters. Um, he's going to have some early success, in which case, if you're an NL only league, I think you'd be smart to trade high on him when he is hot. Um, I think he's going to have some early success playing against, against a bunch of guys who are not used to facing him. And in that NL East, so if he gets really, really hot, I would suggest trading extremely high on him. Uh, number 28, I have Chris Medland. This guy's kind of an enigma. I, he just came out of nowhere and was really, really good last year. Conservatively, I have him going with about 13 wins, ERA around 4, 160 Ks. He could do a lot more than that. I mean, he could be like Colby Lewis that first year back from Japan and just be really, really dominant. I just... I'm concerned about him throughout the course of the year and seeing how he can be a starting pitcher all year long. I don't know if his if body might break down at all or not. Number ten, number 29, I got Tommy Malone. Um, this guy's going to be a very, very good pitcher, and I think you're going to see some good things with him this year. I see 12 to 13 wins, ERA around four, about 150 Ks. Uh, number 30, I have his teammate uh, Brad Anderson. Same deal. He, you know, he might be held back with. With some constraints, just because of his uh, injury history, so I see him getting about 10 to 11 wins, ERA mid three, strikeout about 140 batters. Um, I do have some honorable mentions here: C.J. Wilson, Wade Miley, Jake Peavy, Ian Kennedy, Tim Hudson, Jeremy Hellickson, Alex Cobb, Clay Buckholz, and Edwin Jackson. Those, those are some other guys out there that I really like. Edwin Jackson is just non-existent it seems like in a lot of draft rooms and I know he plays for the Cubs but he's a good pitcher he's going to give you a good ERA and get you some K's. Wade Miley's still pretty young so is Jeremy Hellickson and Alex Cobb. Uh, CJ Wilson and Jake Peavy, Ian Kennedy, Tim Hudson those are the kind of guys you know what to expect and I really see uh, Clay Buckles having a nice bounce back here. Uh, moving moving on we have uh, top closers. Uh, Number one, I have Craig Kimball. I see him saving about 50 games. I, I, it's hard to predict something like that, but that's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it and give him 50. Number two, I got Jason Mott. I see him saving in the mid-40 range. Same thing with um, Fernando Rodney at number three. Chris Perez, I see about 38 saves. He's already dinged up a little bit, so that could be an issue there. Number five, I have Jonathan Papabon and Mariano Rivera. Both had about 36 saves. Number seven, I have John Axford, about 33 saves. I think Axford had some issues last year. I think he's sorted them out. He cut his hair, and I think he's going to be ready to go. I think the Brewers are going to be pretty excited to have him. That's, that's a weird team of the Brewers. I think they could be either be really good or they could just really lose a lot of games, like 8-9 to nine or 9-5 to five or something like that. I just don't know how their pitching is going to hold up starting-wise, but I think Axford might have a decent year for him. Number eight, I have Glenn Perkins. Perkins is a converted starter like a lot of closers, and this is his first full year as a closer, so I'm going to get slate him down for about 31 wins. Um, he's a lefty who who has a nice picks mix, pitch, pitch mix, excuse me, and I think that's going to be very a very nice, interesting thing for the Twins going forward. Number nine, I got Jim Johnson. I see him saving about 30 wins for Baltimore. This team, I think Baltimore team is going to struggle a little bit and not not win a lot of games, so Jim Johnson is going to be a big part of w helping them conserve the wins that they do get. Number 10, I have Joe Nathan. I think Texas is going to have some certain issues this year, but I think Nathan's going to save about 25 to 30 games for him and uh, do very well for them going going forward into this season. 
Uh, Nathan has proved that he was healthy after a, a, hard, a harsh year last year, or excuse me, some uh, Tommy John surgery. He came back and did some really, really good things for them. So I'm pretty excited about what he brings to the table for Texas Rangers. Um, I've got another top 10 list here of holds guys and potential save options. These are guys that can take over the closer role if there's some failure issues there. Number one, I have Pedro Strop of Baltimore. I think this guy is the best reliever in baseball. I know he just pitched in the World Baseball Classic. But he, he does some amazing things, and I'm really, really excited about him and what he has holding. He's obviously going to be a, probably a closer somewhere in the future. If not, he's going to be one of the best middle relievers this league has seen in a while. Number 22, excuse me, number two, I have Bobby Purnell. I see him saving saving a good 15 games because who knows what's going to happen with Frank Francisco and what and, and all the mess they have going on there in, in New York. Number three, I have Ernesto Fieri. I think he's going to get a lot of holds and he's going to get some saves too because I don't see Ryan Madsen being healthy all year long. Number four, I have Kenley Jansen. He's obviously the backup plan for Brandon League there in L.A. with the Dodgers. Um, I see him getting getting mid-20s holds, saving maybe about 13 games. Number five, I have Tyler Clippert. He's going to get a good 20-plus holds and maybe save a few games too because Soriano's already dinged up. He, Clippert might start the year as closer there. Number six, I have Brandon Marshall. Excuse me, Sean Marshall. Uh, I see him saving or holding about 30 games, maybe getting about 10 saves. Um, don't know what the exact plan is right now. I know Broxton, they're saying, is a closer. It might be moving Chapman back to the pen. He, who knows? You know, I just I, I don't know really what to expect there. So, you know, if there's an issue and they want to keep Chapman in the, in the rotation, they'll do so. And then I think if Broxton needs a backup plan, Sean Marshall is obviously the guy. He's a... He's a quality bullpen arm and just gets the job done. He does whatever they asked him to do, and he he's done so for years. Number seven, I have Ryan Cook of Oakland. Um, you're not sure – I'm not sure what, what Grant Belfour is going to do all, all year long. He's never been healthy all year long, and he's getting up there in age. So Cook is a nice backup plan there. Number nine – or excuse me, number eight, I got Matt Thornton. Uh, Matt Thornton has been a setup man forever. He's got, got some saves in his career too, so – I see him definitely filling in for Addison Reed here and there if Reed needs a day off. So I see him getting six six or seven saves possible, saving a, a holding about 25 games. Number nine, I have Luke Gregerson. This guy should be a closer somewhere. He's not. Houston Street always misses two to three weeks somewhere. So I see Gregerson filling in that and getting about eight to nine saves, probably holding 30 games. Number ten, I got Santiago Casilla. Casilla's going to hold in the mid-20s and probably save a handful of games, too. I know I know that, that the closer situation in San Fran never seems to be clear, and who knows if Romo is going to be the man there all year long or what he's got in store in terms of durability. But I obviously Casilla is, is a, a valuable member of that bullpen, which is a very strong bullpen. Um, this has been Obscure Depths by Fantasy Pitcher Breakdown. I just told you about 50 pitchers in about 19 minutes. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. And if you don't like it or I forgot your favorite pitcher, comment on the bottom. Tell me I'm wrong. Love you. Bye-bye.